is Stacy, and I just want to give you a little uh, navigation tool as you, those of you who get our specialized Excel spreadsheets and students, you'll have a very detailed uh, video for you to review. But this is an HVAC, and I've been on HVAC a lot. I'm going to get on other stuff. But basically, <clears throat> what you need to do is just highlight a portion, go to home, go to insert row, and as many as you need. Or you can delete a row. Okay, you can say delete row and put in as many as you need. And then what you're going to do is copy this, copy whatever you need to do, and paste it and make a whole new row. So when you get our original Excel spreadsheet, okay, it's not going to have everything on it that you could possibly do as an HVAC contractor, right? Because you have so many possibilities of spiral and rectangular duct. But again, say we had a twin, you see how I have it, you know, neatly broken down and the size and in the 90s if it applies to the project. Okay, so and a space in between. So say for instance, six by six had a 90 and a 45. So what we do is highlight that. Okay, go home and because it's so big, I have to go home. And then I'm going to say insert a row. Let's insert two. Okay, so we're going to put in a space for a 90 and a 45. So we just go to anyone that has something already because we want to keep the consistency of the equation that goes all the way down. So we highlight it. We say copy. No, we say control C, which is copy. And then I'm going to put that in these two spaces because, like I said, I'm going to do a 45 and a 90. Control V puts it there. And now I know I'm going to leave the 90. I'm going to change this one. Go up into the editing tab up here. Okay. If you don't see it here, you're not changing it on the form. For instance, if you think, oh, let me put it here or whatever. You see, it's the, no. A good example is the title. Okay. So here's the title. If you don't see these words in the editing screen, you're not editing what's on the sheet. For instance, if I thought I could put it there and edit it, you see it's not in the editing block. And so you're not going to change it. So let me just type something in there. You see how it, it'll put it, it's going to mess up the whole thing. And so you got to make sure wherever you put the block, you have to see it in the editing screen. That way you know you're properly changing it and not messing up equations and stuff like that. All right, so let's go back. <clears throat> uh, where is it? Six by six, I think I said. I wanted to add 45s and 90s. Okay, so I did all that. I opened it up and then I, I copied and I pasted it. And now I'm going to edit it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make that 45s. And, you know, we have one of... And so I know a six by six forty five is not the same price and man hour situation as the one I just copied from. So you always make sure you go back and you delete that. Okay, before you screw it up and think and forget to delete it. Now you got to go back in your cost book and find out what the material cost is for six by six ninety. Put it here, you know, uh, forty five. Put it there, and then the man hour situation here and there, and then you'll have your completed form. Okay, so that's how you input using our specialized Excel spreadsheet. And this is why you want to get it because it's very detailed, easy to manipulate. Once you have the master, that's how you go in and change each one project by project. And two, uh, now Excel has auto save. So make sure when you make any revisions or whatever, you turn auto save off. If you're like, say for instance, I want to now do a different estimate. I got to change auto save off because if I start editing here and then try to change later, it's going to write over whatever this project originally was. So again, chain take auto save off. Then you can go in editing tab and say, you know, project, uh, <laughs> project 2025. You can put that in there, <laughs> save it, and you have North Shore Bank and project 2025 all right so um <laughs> let's see 
So why are you on our Excel spreadsheet? Or why you want to create your own like this if you want to win, okay? First thing you need to make sure you can do is get these cost units from some kind of construction cost book. Talk to me about it later at education at sfjohnsonconsulting.com. So your GC can see you have everything and you look very professional, okay? So it's always the straight runs, 90s, whatever. And then all of the miscellaneous duct work, the transitions, the reducers, the branches. This is the part, if you looked at any of the other videos I put out, this is the part that's a pain in the butt. But you got to make sure you do it, okay? So that, and then all of your equipment. And see, I leave zeros because all of these should be a lump sum somewhere or get them individually from your material, uh, your equipment supplier. But of course, you'll get the man hour, how long it takes to install, place it situation from the cost book. And then next, we're going to get all of our registers and grills and dampers and whatever special. And then all of our flex. And remember, if you looked at another video, I'll put a link here how we determine just because we don't have time to be measuring flex. We give it a rule of thumb type of situation and keep it moving. And so, yeah. Always for HVAC, you want to add balance in the system, however you get that done. And here, I, I leave that blank for my clients to fill out. Okay? And so, whether you're HVAC, electrical, mechanical, and, and I'll have a small video and a short for each one of these. Each one of these, I'm from the... Each one of these to show you. If you're a GC, you need one or, or ask your subs to give you something like this. Or if you're whatever, you need to produce it like that. You look like a professional. Uh, it helps you because now you can go through and say, okay, let me mess with my labor rate. Or let me mess with the man hour unit. Let me see if I can do it a little faster than what the construction industry tells me I can. And let's see how I can slim or, you know, down my, my estimate. And two. Like I advise every contractor, if you don't win, ask the GC for the winning number. That way you can go back and look at your number you presented and see if there was any way by messing with any of these variables, which the only thing you could do is labor rate, man hours, overhead and profit. Only thing you could really play with uh, to see if you could get to that number, that one, and what would it take you to do it? Okay, that's an intelligent contractor that's really just doing more than just going out there trying to beat everybody out or lowball everybody. Okay, that's the contractor that wants to, like me, wants to be in business 15 years from now. Okay, you got to hone in on your profession, do it in a professional way, make sure you have professional tools to use, and not dum dums like your Uncle Fred, who's been doing it for 10,000 years, giving you a dumb reason to do whatever okay so this is stacy make sure to join like subscribe because if you do again you're not making me a millionaire you're helping people like you find this like you did have a wonderful rest of your day see you soon